In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to give you some tips on using an effect tool called the BCC Wire Removal. This is a tool that you have if you're an owner of PowerDirector 21 Ultimate or a subscriber to PowerDirector 365. Basically what it will do is it will take anything that's linear and allow you to mask it out it could be a chain, a pole, a wire, anything that's basically straight. Let's show you a little bit about how to do that. What I have on track number two is a staging video of some cars driving down a road. And when we see them, they're just it's a still shot. That's the best way to use this particular tool. And if you notice on the left side, there's a fire hydrant right in front of that building What's red and it has a identifying pole sticking out of it. Let me assume I want to take that out of my picture. How can I do that? We're going to use this tool to do that. So I'm going to click on my effect room. I can press the F4 function key and get there as well. And now what I'm going to do is limit the options I have. I'm going to go to the subcategory on this one and it's going to be third party and I could click on one of the icons. I'm going to change the display so I can see better. This is from my uh, Boris FX Restoration and Lights subcategory and we'll move down until we see the one that is called my wire removal. I could also could do a, a search up there if I wanted to but we'll take the wire remover and drag and drop it down onto our video clip. And now with it there, I'm going to click on the eye and click on click on the eye for effect and then click on wire removal to get into the parameters for this particular tool. You notice there are lots of things that we can do with this tool. Let's look at some of them. First of all, there are three methods. There is cover, there is mask, and there's clone. We're going to deal with all three of them. But basically, we're going to try to get the fire hydrant out. So the view we have is render. That's the end result. I'm going to change the view to preview area. Okay, now this shows me basically where my wire is. It starts in the upper left and goes to the lower right. We're going to change, change it so it's in front of this fire hydrant. So we need to change the endpoint one. I'm going to click on the modify button below that. It opens up the screen, it takes me to that, and I'm going to move it right in to the top of my fire hydrant. Unfortunately, there's no zoom control here. So there's the first point. We'll like, take endpoint number two. We'll modify that. We have to do these on separate screens, and I'll drag it down right about to there. And you can make these modifications as often as you want. Now the other option we have when it comes to this is we can modify the width, feathering, and noise and mix with original. If we change the width, watch what happens on the screen. Now obviously I don't want it wider than it needs to be to cover the object. So I can either adjust it using the slider or I can be more fine-tuned and just use the numbers over here. If I want to change the noise, that basically makes it more granular. That's more effective when you have a lot of detail in the background like grass and stuff. So I, I might notch it up just a little bit there. And then of course we have a feathering tool. My default happened to be 80. We can make it more or less feathered if we want. And so that gives me the way to look at it. Now if I turn from preview area in the view to render, that's going to be what it looks like. And if it's not really too bad, especially given all of the things in the background that it has to deal with. So that's pretty effective. And again, let's see what happens when we play a segment of this. So now that we've applied it, let's click on play and see if we notice the fire hydrant in the scene. And it's barely visible. You have to be aware that it was there in the first place to see it. So it's a pretty effective tool. Let's look at something else we can do with it though. I'm going to click on the icon and go to the wire remover. And let's assume that instead of cover, what I want to do is I want to clone. I'm going to click to the clone option. Now these bottom areas here are for clone. It will ask me to modify what I want to clone and do I want the clone to be center relative. Let me show you the difference there. I'm going to click on modify and this gives me the element I want to clone. Now you notice when I move the red dot it changes 
the area that was highlighted by the wire remover tool. So I can pick the sidewalk, I can pick grass, and you notice it will take this as the bottom reference area for the area that I have picked and move up as long as that happens to be. So right now the bottom is in the grass, but the top part is going to be in the sidewalk. Now if I turn the center relative off, it's going to operate differently. Let's go back to the modify window here. And notice now it basically will clone from the center of the red dot up and down. So here we're getting a bit of the tail light of the car. If I clone here up and down, I'm going to be getting the flagpole. If I clone here up and down, I'm going to be getting the sky. So that's how that works in those two areas. If you want to simply put something cloned in there, you can do that like this. So that's option number two. Option number three, basically, is to create a mask. So I'm going to click on mask. And here is my area that I've selected. And why is the mask green? Well, that's because in the lower track, I put a green color board. So that will basically punch a hole in your video. And whatever's behind it in the layer below it, that will be what you see when you use that option. You also have an option to mix it with the original. Let's go back to cover. And the more you move that to the right, the more of the original you happen to see in there. I'm going to drag it all the way to the left. In fact, I'm going to turn the feathering down a little less and increase the width a little more. See if I can make it go away better. So those are the variations. This is a great tool to use if you have anything linear in your video that you want to mask out. It works best, again, if the camera is still and that you don't have any panning or zooming in the shot.